Welcome to episode two of our chemical equilibrium series. Please make sure you go through the, um, episode one and have a deep understanding of what chemical equilibrium is. Now, in this video, in this episode two, we are going to quickly look at what we call equilibrium constant. equilibrium constant and we will write that as Kc. Alright, now what is equilibrium constant? It is the ratio. Alright, remember the word ratio means we're dividing, right? Or let me use the ratio between the concentration All right, of products. And reactants. It is the ratio between the concentration of rea products and reactants. Please do not forget that concentration is number of moles divided by volume and it is measured in moles per gm cube and the symbol for concentration is written with two block brackets please very very key it is written with block brackets this is very very important it is written with block brackets all right now when it comes to Kc, for Kc, we consider gases only. All right, we only consider what? Gases. We take the equilibrium concentration I'll explain what that word means of solids and liquids as one very important point that we just mentioned now okay Example, or basically, consider, and let me say example, consider a hypothetical reaction small a capital A plus small b capital B. All right, we have our reversible, remember, small c capital C plus small g capital D where small letter A, B, C, D are the coefficients of balancing. So when we balance, those are the numbers we write. Coefficients of balancing, basically integers. And capital A, B, C, D are the chemical reagents and products. All right. I'm going to have gas. Gas. Remember we said we're dealing with gas, right? Good. Kc, therefore, the Kc expression. I want you to watch this. It's now written as this. Please, I'm, I'm going to try to keep that reaction for you there. If you go back to the definition, we said it is the ratio between the products. So we, we're starting with products, all right? It is the ratio between products and reactants. 
So we start with the product. Now, since it's a ratio, look at what I'm going to do. It's a ratio. I'm going to have that. Okay? Let me write my reaction here because of the size of my board. Now, this, in this case, becomes my product, and this becomes my what? Reactant. Now, concentration of the product. All right. Concentration, remember, is written with block brackets. And when we talk about concentration, we talk about concentration of a chemical compound. All right. So I can, therefore, write capital C here. Watch this. Capital C, product. Now, the C here, the small letter C, is a number. That C becomes an exponent. Product, D. See, we're multiplying, guys. We, we are not adding. The D, which is a coefficient there, becomes an exponent. Now I'm going to write that of my reactants. So it's going to be reactant A, reactant B. Let's take a few um, examples. Well, before I go to a few examples, I just need to mention something quickly. There are two types of chemical equilibrium. One, homogeneous equilibria. Okay, I'm using beer because singular. All right. Um, a reaction where all reactants or we can just say all chemicals when we say chemicals we simply mean reactants and products are in the same phase. Remember, phases of matter. Okay? Example here. So I'm going to give an example and then write the KC expression. All right. Examples. Nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas to give us ammonia gas. We need to balance this. And if you remember how to balance, that's a 3 there and that's a 2 there. Now it is balanced. Number one, it is homogeneous. And the reason would be? Or all chemicals, or we can say reactants and products are in the same phase. Remember the word same. Reactants and products are in the same phase, which is simply gases. All right, so what is my KC expression here? My KC expression, let's see. My product is ammonia, so I'm going to come here and write the concentration of ammonia, but there's a 2 in front. That 2 becomes an exponent. Over my reactant, I have nitrogen gas. All right. Please don't change the formula. It's N2. And then I have what? Hydrogen gas, which is H2. But there's a 3, which is the coefficient of balancing. That 3 goes up there. I hope that makes sense. Let me look at another example. And what you can do with this example is quickly write the, for me, uh, write the KC expression for me even before I write the correct one. So you can just mark yourself. All right. SO2 plus O2, that's a gas, that's a gas, to give us SO3 gas. Is it balanced? No, it's not. We've got four oxygen atoms or oxygen molecules on the left. 
So we need to balance that. I need to put a 2 here. That gives me 6. I have a 2 there. Now it is balanced. 4 plus 2, 6. Good. Again, it is what? Homogeneous. I'm sure you understand why it's homogeneous now. All right. Um, reactants and products are in the same phase. Let's write our KC expression. Okay, I'm sure you pause the video, write your KC expression. I'm sure you are done. SO3, I have a 2. SO2, I have a 2, multiplied by oxygen, which is what? A 1. Let me give you another example. Number three. The catalytic oxidation of ammonia to give me nitrogen monoxide and water in form of a gas. This is 4, 5, 4, 6. Again, what do we know? It is homogeneous. Why? Reactants and products are in the same phase. Now, what is my KC expression? Products. I have what? Nitrogen monoxide. The 4 goes on top. Water. The 6 goes on top. Ammonia. The 4 goes on top. Oxygen. And the 5. I hope that has been simplified with those three examples. Now let's look at an heterogeneous um, case. So the second type that we have is heterogeneous. Here, there is a mixture of faces. I'll give you an example. Calcium carbonate solid. All right? Decomposition. Calcium oxide solid plus CO2 gas. What do you notice? It's a mixture of faces, so this is heterogeneous. Now, how do I write my KC? Look at what we said. It should be products, so I'm going to start like this. Now, because it's balanced 1, 1, 1, I, it's just exponent of 1. All right? And, but, however, what do you notice? Calcium carbonate is a solid. So we will not write it like that. We will write it as 1. Calcium oxide is a solid. We will not write it there. We take the equilibrium concentration as 1. So what is Kc? What is Kc? Kc, therefore, is the concentration of carbon dioxide. Okay? I hope that makes sense. All right. The same way... Look at this example. Example 2. Hydrogen gas plus sulfur solid to give us hydrogen sulfide. And that is a gas. Again, what do we know? This is what? A tero. And what is our KC expression? What do we have? We have H2S, concentration, all right, and it's balanced, which is 1, over what? Hydrogen gas concentration. Is that okay? I have simply omitted the solid. So you omit the solid or you replace it by 1. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Let me give you one more, one that could be tricky. Look at this, and this will lead me to say something here. Calcium oxide solid plus CO2 gas to give me calcium carbonate solid. Now, what is my KC expression? Remember, 
I would have written it this way. But we said, solid is written as one. So what is my KC expression? One over concentration of that. All right? Now let's say a few things more about KC. Remember that we have a reversible reaction. Therefore, Kc of the forward reaction is always equal to 1 over Kc of the reverse. Please take note of that. Kc of the forward reaction is equal to 1 over Kc of the reverse. So an examiner can throw a whole lot of questions at you. All right. Important points to note here. Important points. Number two. If Kc is greater than 1, forward reaction is favored. And this simply means more products are formed. Number two, or number three, if Kc is less than one, the reverse reaction is favored. It means more reactants are formed. And the last point I think here, temperature is the only factor that affects Kc value. Temperature is the only factor, all right? This would look at the factors once we're done with the KC calculation. Temperature is the only factor that affects KC value. All right. So please take note of this important point that I just mentioned on KC. KC of the forward is a reciprocal of the reverse. If KC is greater than 1, forward reaction is favored. More products are formed. If KC is less than 1, the reverse reaction is favored. It means more reactants are formed. Temperature is the only factor that affects Kc value. All right, I have about seven minutes, and in that seven minutes, I'm just going to um, window shop quickly into how to calculate your Kc value. And that will be a continuation, um, that will be continued rather, in episode three. How to calculate KC value. I'm just going to put some points here and then end this video. Number one. All right, there are so many methods. So I'm going to use a particular method. Um, let me say one, using the rise table. using the rice table. Please note, this table works with number of moles. So please take note, um, when given a mass, what do you do? Convert to number of moles by using mass over molar mass. All right. Number two.
your ratio is taken from the coefficients of balancing. We will explain this when we look at an example. I quickly just want to give you a um, few notes. Number three. Reactants decrease in number of moles. And products increase in number of moles. What does this mean? I'm going to refer to this note again. The change in reactant is calculated by subtraction. While that of product is calculated by addition. And the question is, what are we adding and what are we subtracting? You would see, I'm just going to give you a very uh, quick preface of what the table looks like. Number four. Volume is calculated in GM cube. So sometimes you are given CM cube and you need to convert to DM cube. What do you do? Divide by what? A thousand. So please take note. You're given CM cube and you need to convert to DM cube. You will divide by a thousand. Okay. All right. What does my table then um, look like. I'm just going to draw a simple table here and we will take it further from the next class. All right. Consider a reaction. AA, already you know what the letters stand for. All right, so this is what my table would then look like. Uh, this is what my table looks like. All right, this is what my table would look like. Now, what would I have here? Um, I'm going to have chemicals here. You may not label this, but it's not really important. And what are my chemicals? Capital A, capital B, all right? capital C and capital D. Okay, I don't need the last um, block there. Now, I'm going to start, we said rice, right? R stands for, let me use red. R and then black. Ratio. So my ratio in this case, I'm going to write these numbers. So in this case, can I just write it as A, B, C? Remember, it will have been numbers that we used in balancing. Okay. The next one, I. Initial. No, I said I want to write just the first letter. I. Which is initial. And basically, we're talking about initial number of moves. Then I come to the next one, C. Change. Again, number of moles. Now you notice the last one remaining would be what? E. And E represents what? Equilibrium.
All right. I hope you can see your eyes now. Equilibrium. Okay. My table should have actually drawn a better table here. All right. I have adjusted my table behind the scenes. Okay. I have to pause the video. All right. Equilibrium number of moles and then equilibrium concentration. And how do we calculate concentration? Number of moles divided by volume. I always write my volume that I'm given here. All right, so this is a prototype of the table you need to follow. Please take note. I'm going to show you how it works. Your RICE, R-I-C-E, ratio, initial number of moles, change in number of moles, equilibrium number of moles. And under that equilibrium, you have number of moles and concentration. So basically, these two lines represent your equilibrium. Initial represents your start and your change is what is used up or what is formed. All right. And then we know that reactants will decrease in number and products will increase in number. We're going to jump into an activity or question to be able to explain how this table works. It's very simple, very, very simple and straightforward. So please, episode three would be dealing with KC calculations. Catch you in episode number three. Goodbye.